everybody. I'm BJ Flagg. And I'm Rich G, and this is episode 340, When the Fear It's the Fan. <laughs> yes, yes. Navigating crises are the integral part of running a small business. Be prepared can mean the difference between a minor setback and a major disaster <laughs> when it is yeah. unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have uh, fun with this one we don't we, we don't totally want to use have we don't and, want to use that word no expense no one's expense we don't want to use that word so <laughs> no informative guide to managing when things go hoo and covering <laughs> most uh covering four of the most common scenarios exactly. and we're, we're also going to add actionable strategies for each one um, yeah we're not saying that they're going to happen we're just saying here's four typical scenarios but when the who hits the fan <laughs> you need to take action and that's the yes. most important part exactly and a little faster than just anything else that you're doing yes. um what's what's interesting and what rich and i are both seeing is financial downturn you know i'll give you the scenario are you ready Sales are plummeting. The cash flow is drying up. Financial downturns are threatening your business survival. Whether due to economic recessions, increased competition, or the loss of key clients. Dun, dun. <laughs> but maybe one of these things might be happening to you. Like maybe yeah. sales are plummeting or you're losing some key clients or something like that. Financial right. downturn happens actually a lot, you know, in yeah. a small business. And you have to not go crazy. You just have to prepare for it. Right. And there's there's some great action items that kind of take you through what you can do. And these are a lot of the things that we talk about kind of on an ongoing basis on the podcast. Yeah. But the, this is when you're under extreme pressure. So the first thing is conduct a financial audit. You need to identify the areas where you can cut costs without sacrificing quality of your product or your service. The one biggest thing that you've got to do at this point is run a run rate report. That is the amount of time when all the money is gone. Yeah. And so you have to do that because in it realistically, you can't be an ostrich and stick your head in the sand. You've got to be on all of this. Mm -hmm. So those are essential, absolutely essential. Yeah, it's it, it, you're absolutely right. Too many companies start to cut a quality they cut size you see this with cereal oh my gosh cereal <laughs> <laughs> but, but with a run rate report yeah you get to see i i could go six months you know with no right. clients and then i'll be fine and yeah. then also you get to sleep at night uh yeah second and you're also accident. not really gonna go yes. six months without a client hello folks <laughs> but you're, you're prepared for it you're prepared which is, which is awesome. Your second action item is diversify revenue streams. That's huge. Explore new markets or add complementary product services to your offerings. I have yeah. clients that I coach on a uh, biweekly basis. It works out great. I also have corporate clients where I do workshops. I'm doing a workshop tomorrow night. I do yeah. workshops. I do webinars. I do other things. So I diversify my revenue stream. Yeah. And, you know, and think about our marketing um, company. We work on projects and they might last four months, might 18 months. We have just retainer accounts that happen every month and that's got to go out and this happens. Having the diversity gives us a real strength during any type of time. So um, the other thing that we want you to concentrate on is enhancing your customer relationships. I, I know we seem like we harp on this, but improving engagement with your current client base is gonna boost repeat business. I am a fiend dog about calling people on the phone. I know, I know. People sit there, they just like, what the heck? 
And I'll just be like, hey, Kelly, how you doing? What's going on? I thought about you yesterday when the cherry blossoms started coming out. We talk for five minutes. That's about it. And then we're done. And I said, anything else we can help you with today? She goes, oh, no, 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 we're great. We're great. We're having a fun time. And like, ah, so that's a huge thing. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, I always say to clients, when business is down, you have lots of time. So enhance your old or current customer relationship. Call them up. You now have time. When business is busy, you don't have time for this. But when it's right. slow, enhance your customer relationship. The last action we want you to take is seek financial assistance. Consider oh loans government grants, financial aid to support distressed businesses. This is something I actually was talking to a client where I found out he doesn't have a line of credit with his local bank. I said, I want you to go out today, visit a local bank, not the big guys, go to yeah. a local bank and just secure a uh, line of credit because- You may never need it. Yeah. You might yeah. never need it, but you have ups and downs. It's there to help you with payroll and other things. Yeah. And also like it, what it also does, it, it, Rich brought this up just a little bit before and kind of skirted over it. It helps you sleep at night. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard being a small business owner and this type of thing, developing that relationship is also a tie to the community. They are tied to the community as opposed to like a Bank of America that's tied to the world. Yeah. So it's it's something to think about for sure. Take us into the next one. The next one when the who is the fan <laughs> yes. uh, is a key employee departure. And when I mean key, one of the main people, the high performers decides to leave your company. Here's the scenario. A key employee or executive leaves, potentially disrupting operations or critical projects. Yes. Dun, yes. Uh, dun, dun, dun. This is a severe time. Um, you know, we we run a you know sizable web business, and um, you know, four hundred different clients kind of rely on us. <laughs> to be there and one of our key web guys um wanted to go over to another firm and in, instead of holy cow i can't believe this is happening we had already diversified so we already had a complete backup team i had nurtured a relationship for another local person who could step in pdq and then we were able to start a nice, slow process to replace that person. Yeah. So it was not not that everybody's indispensable, you know, that whole idea of being dispensable. No, no, it's not that. We miss her like crazy. We loved her. She was a great person. It's just we have to realize, you, you know, as a business owner, you've got to be ready for that. Yeah, you got to move on. And that's why we yeah. come up with four action items to help you when a key employee leaves. Number one is develop a contingency plan. And this is something you need to do before people leave. Have a succession plan in place for all key positions. If Steve leaves, what do you do? Who could is there someone that could replace Steve or do I need to hire? What can I do? So and this could be something that you set up. It, it would take 10, 15 minutes of just yeah. uh, coming up. So you have a plan. And so if and when it happens, you're like, no problem. And you just move on. Yeah. And think about like cross training employees. That's the best thing you can do to ensure that the knowledge base and skills are not siloed into one individual employee. Somebody else has to know where the keys are. Someone else needs to know how to get in there and uh, change that copy in constant contact. You know, we, we all have um, diverse skills at our company. So what if someone got sick for four days with a stomach flu? Wait a minute. That actually happened. Uh, you, everybody needs to be able to step in make the changes, do the things, keep moving, um, cross training. You yeah. can't beat it. 
maintain open communication at all times. So make sure you keep your team informed to prevent any kind of rumors or and also to maintain morale. Because <clears throat> people start seeing a top person leave, it might start yes. a cascade and you don't want that to happen. Or people start losing faith in the company because someone left just because they left because of a life circumstance. So keep the team yeah. informed and the communication open. Yeah. And also hire strategically. Don't don't be like you have to do it right away type of thing. You know, look for the replacement who will not only fill that gap, but also bring new energy into the and ideas into the role. You know, think of it as a, as a resurgence, a rebirth of what's happening in your company. It's a good thing. It's an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. You have what's, to look at it that way, Rich. Absolutely. So what's our third action? Oh, PR crisis. Here's the scenario. Your business takes a public relations crisis, such as negative press coverage, a social media backlash, which could damage your reputation and customer trust. Bum, bum. Yeah. Not good. Oh my gosh. Oh we, yeah. Uh, I was talking to Rich that we were for the last whatever 15 years with a with a crisis management company out of Hartford. And I am telling you, she is the front of the fire hose. She knows exactly what you have to do. Ha Got to do it quickly and you know speed is of all importance. Rich, have you seen this in your business too? Absolutely, absolutely. People don't realize things can come out of left field. Where um, I've I've talked to companies, CEOs of companies, and I've told them, you know, I was walking in. You know, we met at night, and yeah, I was walking in. I go, you need to get more lighting out here, and they're like, well, why? I go, if one of your employees gets attacked or robbed, it's going to be on the news. And, and suddenly you're playing catch up rather than putting some cameras out here, some adequate lighting, maybe a security guard walking once in a while, you know, it's not yeah. that much it, it compared to, and it could have, it happens like that. So. It does. It does. And that's the saddest part. Um, you know, a couple of action items. I want to kick it off with respond promptly and appropriately. Um, you know, we're going to assume that you have a crisis management plan. This is essential. You have to address the issue head on with well thought out um, statement or press release. You have to have a plan. Yeah. Sit down, get it done as soon as possible. Second, yes. engage with your community. Use social media and other platforms to communicate directly with the stakeholders. Uh, it, the the faster you you open up the conversation and you communicate, the better it's going to be with your community. And you know you got to monitor the situation, monitor the public's response, and adjust your strategy when you need it. You know it's going to be a free flowing situation. It's a it's a minute by minute thing, but you also have to be very guarded. You know you have to be transparent, open, and all of that type of stuff. But you also can't be, you know, Elon Musk just saying whatever you care to say. You you got to be really good with what you're saying. And finally, learn and adapt. Review yeah. what went wrong post crisis and implement changes to prevent future incidents. Because sometimes these things could have been, uh, you know, dodged, but unfortunately, it happened. So you need to you know, understand what happened and make sure it never happens again. So. And, and do you find, do you find with some of your clients that um, afterward, it's kind of like they're in this PTSD, they think it's yeah. going to happen again, right? Oh, yeah. Especially if it's something that affects a lot of people in the company, it could be uh, a I, I hate to be uh, maudlin, but I worked at a company 20 years ago. I came into work and everybody was outside of the building. I went to a doctor's appointment, so I came into work late. 
everybody's outside the building. I go, what are we having? A fire alarm, fire thing? And they went, no, someone committed suicide inside the building over the weekend. And we're like, oh, gosh. No and way. We're like, everybody's being sent home. Talk about the reverberations within the company and what the company had to do to deal with that. I mean, and yeah. it, it's just, and it, it's, it, they, they had to do some major things to take care of it. They, they actually reorganized that whole part of the floor. They moved everything so nobody would have that office, you know? Right. And, 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 oh. and it's, it's also like, you know, if there's a, a real issue with one person and they get walked out of the building and da, 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 da. there's a bit of retraining sometimes that has to get done. You know, they, they got to bring in their favorite uh, coach to get things uh, organized and re put together. It's amazing Absolutely. what people go through, you know, and um, a real psychological issue. So yeah. that that's a hot button for sure. Well, our fourth scenario today is supply chain disruptions. This has probably happened a lot to people in the last few years, but here's the scenario. Natural disasters, geopolitical events, or other factors disrupt your supply chain, leading to delays or increased costs. We've been going through it, guys. <laughs> it happens to a lot of people. We could all write this book. This is, this is one of those things where you're out it's an out-of-body experience everything's going fantastic you get one phone call and they say this part's not going to be there until two weeks yeah. oh my god you just promised four people that you're finishing everything on thursday yeah and it is that's unbelievable so there's some action items that are essential to getting this going yeah, the first one, and I tell my clients this all the time, diversify your suppliers. Avoid uh. dependence on a single source for your critical inputs. Make sure you have backups. Make sure you have you duplicate uh, your suppliers just in case. This backup happens. of a backup? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you, you really have to. You know, we have um, a printing side to our business, and we have like four backups four different backups because we can't say no, that's not an option, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, the paper disruption, things like that going on. Oh my gosh. We're, you know, we're challenged. So, so anyway, that, that's such an important one. Um, you also have to uh, build inventory buffers, have extra stock of essential items so that it can tide you over for these short-term disruptors. Buy the toilet paper, put it up on the shelf. It's important. <laughs> yeah, you need to do this. You know, build those that inventory up in those parts or tools or areas that you know are going to be hot. Uh, the yeah. third action item we want you to take is to communicate transparently. Keep your customers informed about potential delays or issues. Don't not call them. Call them immediately and say, Look, I just want to let you know we're running into a delivery problem on one of these items. So that's going to hold us back just to let you know. It's not right. your fault. I'm checking other suppliers for this, but I just want to let you know as soon as possible. Yeah. And then when the, pe the piece comes in, you immediately call them and say, false alarm, piece came in, all is good. Just wanted to make sure you knew. And and they love the communication. So. It's so awesome. You also just need to explore alternate solutions. You know, be ready to pivot. Whenever, uh, you know, I have a couple of um, printers that I'm so impressed with because they're pivoters. You know, whenever I call them, it, it, I love it that this supplier can just quickly and temporarily, you know, alter your product lineup for you. You know, they'll immediately say, I'll say, I can't believe it. I needed this card stock and now we don't have it and stuff. And he goes, you know, you're a designer. Design and use a different cardstock page. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I got to be hit on the side of the face for that type of thing. I, I love them for it. And you got to explore alternate solutions that could be fantastic. So, so let's wrap it up, BJ. <clears throat> yes. Crises are inevitable in business world, but with the right strategies, you can navigate through them. The key 
is to stay calm, think strate- strategically, and take decisive action. Yeah. At the end of the day, remember, every challenge is an opportunity to learn, grow, and emerge stronger on the other side. Boy, do I sound like <laughs> I know. Of, on the other side. Of the other side. Uh, but that's it for uh, this episode. We invite you to share this podcast on LinkedIn and Instagram Twitter, whatever you want to call it, and TikTok while it's still here with the hashtag, the best small business show. Yeah, and thanks for tuning in to the best small business show. If this episode has been valuable to you, subscribe, follow, and share it with other budding entrepreneurs who could benefit. And that's it for this week. You can reach out to me at newrenew.com and find Rich at richg.com. Thanks to our editor and producer, Richard Scalzo. Have an unbelievable week and catch you later.